Also, as you see the pictures here, I'm, I realized that um, Mr. Rutledge of ExxonMobil bit to it, admit me to it this morning when he actually showed the same picture. Uh, particularly proud of this picture, anyway. Uh, it's my pleasure and in my honor to, to, to give you a story about local content to start with, which is uh, we as a company believe that it's, um, maybe there's a little secret I'm giving away. It is a, for us, a strategic element of being competitive. Many companies, many of them see that as a burden, treat that as a cost necessary just to do business. For us, it's quite the opposite. We develop a business model whereby local resources contribute to a value of building something in a way that gives you a competitive advantage. And that's what we've applied in this country. And that's what I think has contributed to our success so far. The competitive advantage of being of using local services and developing those that are, do not exist. So that's the that's tone of why we're doing it. And the fact that there are now guidelines and regulations of local content, we welcome those, but it's, we're doing it not for that reason. Uh, you see, we're not the Red Cross, uh, we're not the charity. We're doing it because we are more successful by doing it. And the country that we work in will benefit from that. So, if I'm moving on, I'll just give you a, a brief, a brief uh, little, little story of Saipem in Guyana. And, and after the award of Lisa phase one, then Lisa phase two and Payara in, in, in the year 2017, 2019, we started to develop our presence. We got to now we have two streams of work. We're working off, offshore, we're working in the water and we're working in, on land to, to prepare for it. Uh, in, in 2019, we developed the largest pipeline, uh, line pipe uh, logistics operation in Georgetown for the pipes of Lisa phase one. In 2020, uh, and in 2019, of course, we, we completed the, the, the work for Lisa phase one. In 2020, we decided to move in with construction. So we approved an investment plan and we started to, uh, we, we, we got our location and we started to make um, those, those civil work to prepare it. Uh, in the same time, we're continuing to lay pipes offshore. In 2021, we completed that facility in, in, in about one year, and we started to produce jumpers for the Lisa phase two. Um, at the same time, in 2021, we substantially completed Lisa phase two offshore with the uh, pipelines, the risers, all the, the, the umbilicals and all that. In early 2022, now, just now, as you know, we, we, we participated in, in achieving first oil for Lisa phase two. Um, we are, um, in 2021, we produced 20 subsea deep water jumpers for Lisa phase two. So Lisa phase two has 20 jumpers built in Guyana, one of which you just saw. Uh, the, the development of our presence in, 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 in sort of in an office environment in, in, in countries is, is grown from uh, 2018 into 2021, and we are now have in excess of 70 people. Um, plus, of course, people that work with us uh, from suppliers and subcontractors. Uh, we're particularly proud of our um, intern program. So, as you see here, we've got a, a bunch of interns every year, and they are quickly developed into important and, and strategic resources for us for our work here, such that we don't have to import people or employ people and train them. This is the internship that becomes training, then becomes work. Uh, we work with the University of Guyana, with the Insti uh, Government Technical Institute, and then we do the usual training that you would expect um, from ISO certification. On the job, tra on the job training is, is something we believe in very strongly. The Offshore construction facilities is a very specialized asset. It's specific, it's not large, but it's very organized for one very focused activity, building jumpers. Um, we, we, we fitted it with some special equipment, including a very large crane. We had to build the, the wharf and the ground to sustain, to support that kind of uh, loads. Um, this type of jumpers, you can imagine, are, are an interesting piece of kit. Uh, imagine a machine or a piece of equipment that has to work under very difficult, stressful conditions in deep water with corrosive fluids, high pressure, 
and need to last for 30 years without being replaced, without being maintained. Now, do you know any machines that last 30 years without maintenance? Uh, so the, imagine the quality that's required to achieve that. Uh, and, and this is what we're doing. This is what we've been doing. And the yard here in Georgetown is capable of handling and fabricating this from scratch. These are uh, 75 ton structures. Um, uh, to make them, we can make about eight per month. On Payara, starting this summer, we'll have to make 48 of them. So this facility is very specific, very focused, and, and has actually grown into a great efficiency. And I will tell you a little important information in a second. Our commitment to develop the facility requires skills. And the, 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 the most important, if you want to want to focus skill is welding. This is pipe welding for high pressure containment. It is not just any welding. It takes years to develop skillful resources. We started a collaboration with a Guyanese joint venture to produce these qualified welders. The fact that it's a Guyanese joint venture doesn't, didn't happen by accident. It happened because we wanted to. We, we invited some company and the requirement was, you need to be Guyanese. You will not get a contract if you're not. This was before local content guidelines came out. Now, now today, as we speak, there is a batch of welders being trained today in Georgetown. So together with Gestion Venture, they provide facilities, they employ the people, uh, we help with the selection of the, of the trainee and we send our uh, qualified welders, we pre prepare the program for welding and we follow the, the process. It's about a three months process. After that, there'll be on the job training. Another important element we, 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 we set to our uh, collaboration with the JV, which is a JV between a Trinidadian and, 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 and a Guyanese company, is that within 18 months from start, we want all the workers to be Guyanese. So at the beginning, there's always a component of foreign workers, mostly the experience from Trinidad. We want 18 months as a transition to a full Guyanese workforce. That's in the contract. Uh, just to give you an idea where we stand with um, our engagement with the local supply systems. So in the bottom, the bottom here of the, of the chart, you can see, no, you can't. We can see basically we started with six suppliers, ended up with 72. Today, we have 72 local suppliers that work with us effectively. Uh, we started with a spend of 3 million a year. Now in 2021, we spent $62 million with local supplies and, and services. And what is most important for me is this pie charts, where you see a gray sector that, that uh, uh, explain what for me is very important is the construction part of the um, services that we get in, in Guyana. And that construction part is the noble part because has carries with it a lot of, uh, a lot of support in direct services. And it is our intention to continue to grow that. It has already grown, as you can see, from 37, 35% in a couple of years ago to now is 57% of everything we do here in Guyana. So, and it is our, it is our uh, intention that this is the noble part of the work we do in Guyana on land, of course, in addition to the work we do offshore. So what's, what's next? Uh, what's the look ahead for us? We continue to uh, follow the path of, of, of intensifying and achieving the full uh, uh, Guyanese uh, uh, performance of our, of our facility. So we need to get these specialized welders to weld pipes, and we need them to weld pipes on Payara this summer. This is a short-term goal. It's very focused on, for us. Um, the next step we will engage in is, is fabrication engineering, where basically we will produce the basic engineering that's required by the fabrication yard in Guyana with engineers. Let's elevate the level, the, the, the bar of, of skills to the engineering level. Uh, longer term, we'll have to expand following all the projected workload 
offshore, we'll have to expand this fabrication capacity. We have a, a small facility. We'll have to find a way to do it in a larger facility. Um, we will develop other parts of engineering that pertain to offshore construction work, like installation engineering and operation management. Things to get done in project teams that are normally located partly abroad, uh, we'll have to develop more capacity here. And that's our next longer term uh, goal. And this comes an important element for me, which is the establish with this capacity, a business model to serve the CARICOM countries. I'll give you a little secret. Uh, on Lisa phase one, we had to build jumpers. These jumpers I've been talking about in Trinidad. There was no way to build them in Guyana on Lisa phase one in 2019. In 2021, and just now we built 20 jumpers in Guyana. The jumpers that we're building today in Guyana are more cost effective than the jumpers we build in Trinidad. Don't want to use the word cheaper, but it's there. So when we get to that point, guess what's next? You can serve other countries because you have established a cost effective operation in Guyana. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't let you go without talking about our safety record and, and, the, and the, what I have achieved at this uh, local fabrication yard in terms of safety, which is, of course, number one, which is a value, not even a priority. Without safety, you don't do anything. You don't get out of the house. So, um, and, and I don't know if you can see it, but I want to point the, the, the little table, the little blue table in the middle. Well, we tell you that uh, on Lisa 2 project, phase two, we've done 7.5 million man hours of work uh, and uh, 34,000 hours of training on the project overall. It, we use a coefficient of man hours, training hours over thousands of hours, which for Lisa project was 4.5, In Guyana here in the fabrication yard, we have done 173,000 man hours. And the same coefficient is actually 9.3, is more than double. So safety doesn't happen by luck. Safety happens by working on it. We have done the double amount of safety training in our YAR facility here than we've done all across the entire project. So that's dedication, that's planning, that's focus. Uh, and we're shifting, we're shifting our message from, let's say, I don't say negative, but certainly from collecting statistics about accidents and events to positive safety, the safety that encourage people to do better. This is positive reinforcement. We recognize the scene in this child, we recognize behavior, we celebrate getting it right, we do incentives for, for as an observation card. So we, we spin a positive element of safety. And that's very important rather than reminding people how many accidents we've had in the past. So that's, that's very motivating for me. Uh, we have specific safety initiative at the yard, for example, radiation protection. We do x-rays sometimes. And so radiation protection is something that was new to this workforce. Very proud of what, what we've done so far. I'm very proud of the young team that I have here that um, has, has taken on the challenge and has proven to be extremely successful. This is all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Giorgio. That was a lot. Not You said it was awful, that was a lot. And um, when you said the young team,